The awakening of the world after the last glacial maximum, in terms of the human species, begins with small steps towards the world as we know it today. First of all, perhaps we should pay attention to one fact, and that is that humans and human ancestors have already lived practically 99.9% .9 of the time in the world, ever since they have existed as hunter-gatherers for over five or six million years. Only in the last 10,000 years, people have started producing food. This is a huge difference. A huge change in lifestyle from hunting and gathering everything you need for your existence. From nature, people started growing plants and domesticating animals that they used for food. And in that way they changed their lives so that they stayed in one place and did not migrate. This happened 10,000 years ago. It is important to say that it did not happen only once. So, people didn't just suddenly discover and domesticate animals. This happened in at least 10 or 15 different places on all continents at a relatively similar time, not simultaneously, but it all happened somewhere at the very end or shortly after the end of the last ice age. It certainly wasn't some kind of wish for a better life or some genius spark that came to someone's mind, but actually a consequence of necessity. Because people de facto reached their hunting and gathering resources that the earth has in one moment, and that they could continue to maintain on earth, so there were more and more of them. They had to come up with something else. They invented these settlements. Global warming began somewhere around 18,000 years before Christ, the grip of the cold slowly began to loosen. The heating process was not uniform. It was slow and interrupted by small ice ages. Around 13,000 before Chris, temperatures reached today's values, but then there was a change in the next thousand years. In the period called the Younger Dryas, cold and ice returned around 9600 BC. In the period called the Younger Dryas, cold and ice returned around 9,600 years before Christ. That small ice age ended in just 50 years. Temperatures have risen by 7 degrees Celsius. The Holocene is the interglacial period in which we are still living and it began with the sudden warming around 9,500 years BC. It is actually the current, post-Pleistocene geological period. It includes the last 10,000 years. This is how the period called Holocene began. Global warming has brought about a large rise in sea level. This, in turn, led to major changes on the surface of the Earth. The Japanese islands are separated from the Asian mainland. Tasmania is separated from Australia and Britain from Europe. East Asia and North America, around 8500 BC, the flooding of the Bering Strait was separated. The most dramatic land loss in the late Pleistocene and early Holocene occurred in Southeast Asia were the landmass known as Sunderland. The size of two Indies lost half its area. This resulted in the creation of Southeast Asian islands. Sumatra was finally separated from Malaysia by the creation of Strait of Malacca, somewhere around 6,500 BC. The continents got their present shape around 5000 BC. The change in climate also brought a change in vegetation. Birch and pine forests spread. They moved slowly to the north. Oak, beech and elm slowly began to move north from their warm hiding places during the Pleistocene. To those previously frozen areas, the tundra has shrunk, deserts have shrunk, The Sahara became an area of lakes that surrounded savannas, around 9000 BC. 
hunter-gatherers who used ceramics and supplemented their diet with plenty of fish came to today's central southern Sahara. In a world that has changed like this, some hunter-gatherer communities have begun to supplement their diet with domesticated wild plants. It actually seems to be the domestication of cereal plants that were first domesticated. It went more or less unconsciously as a kind of symbiosis because wild grains are built in such a way that if you systematically change them in this way, you introduce new evolutionary pressures in the selection of that seed. And that seed de facto changes by itself by some evolutionary rules. And you get domesticated plants in a relatively short period of time. It is done in several human generations. Accordingly, it was domesticated by cereals. It happened as a consequence of the intensive use of wild grasses and wild grains which then actually changed under such a new regime and became dependent on humans. The change that occurred after global warming benefited people. Admittedly, the expansion of forests did not favor hunters because it was more difficult to follow the prey in. As it was in the open terrain of the former tundra and steppes. Hunter-gatherer communities that lived mainly in tropical and subtropical areas during the Pleistocene. They began to spread to the north. The ideal place for living was the areas next to the river and the lake that were not occupied by the forest. Early Holocene communities, they gathered the fruits with stone harvest knives or dug up tubers with digging sticks and hunted with spears and boughs. Like their Paleolithic ancestors, they exploited the natural resources moving across the landscape, usually in small groups that occasionally regrouped during seasonal gatherings, such as salmon hunting or some other place of abundance. They were characterized by mobility and their societies were small. The geographical and seasonal distribution of natural resources determine the size and distribution of these human communities and their number because they were hunters, fishermen, gatherers, not food producers and were dependent on available natural resources. At the end of the Ice Age and the transition to the climate, we have today a large number of large mammals, the so-called megafauna, died out everywhere in the world. However, when you compare in Europe, these extinctions were clear. The mammoths and many large predators that go with them have disappeared. However, a much worse thing happened on the continents where actually people did not even live. Before the end of the Ice Age, people entered America late. There they found huge herds of these large mammals that were actually naive. They didn't know people, nor did they know that people were dangerous. But de facto, it seems that it was one of the important factors that caused the extinction of the vast majority of the so-called American megafauna. This is one part of the story. Another part of the story, which is perhaps even more significant, but coincided in time. Let's say, with that, you actually have a gradual increase in the human population since the beginning of the world. Clearly, we cannot talk about the exact number, how many people lived in the world in which time. But some estimates are possible, and it is known that somewhere around the end of the Ice Age there lived in the world, probably somewhere around 8 to 10 million people in total. Altogether, the so-called food capacity of the globe can be roughly calculated. Humans seem to have reached that level of the world's food capacity if you are a hunter-gatherer. Therefore, there was a pressure. Those natural sources of food for the hunter-gatherer economy were somewhere at an end. Of course, it was different in different areas. But obviously in some areas, people started experimenting or simply eating in a different way. Which, perhaps accidentally, led to the domestication of some plants. And then people realized that they could maybe do something similar with another. Then, 
Relatively soon after the first domestic cereals, domesticated goats and sheep appeared in this part of the world. Already at the end of the Ice Age or the last glacial maximum, some hunter-gatherers began to exploit the environment in a new way. They no longer just gathered and hunted. They began to cultivate and domesticate a species. In 1979, a drought caused the Sea of Galilee to drop. Water withdrawal revealed charring marks. Archaeologists began excavations and discovered traces of a settlement called Ohalo. The site dates back to around 20,000 BC and today is the earliest evidence of the Neolithic Revolution. The Neolithic is the New Stone Age, the period when man slowly began to move from hunting and gathering to agriculture. The people who lived in the halo were not farmers. They were hunter-gatherers who supplemented their diet with wild grains and stored these fruits. Their huts were built of intertwined saplings of oak and willow. They were oval, with a diameter of 3 to 4 meters. People in Ohalo to obtain wild grains. By beating the plants with sticks so that the grains fell into the basket. This method is used by today's peoples, such as the North American Indians. When they collect seeds from wild grass, to be effective, they must time the collection well. If the grains are not ripe, only a few grains fit into the baskets, if the grains are overripe, most of the grains are already on the floor. Some of the fallen grains will give new shoots in the spring. Other grains, probably most of them, will end up in the mouths of birds and rodents. Plants were important to the people in the Ohal. Animals that lived in the forest and steppe were also important to them. Their favorite game was the gazelle. The fallow deer roamed the mountainous part of Lebanon. A wild donkey grazed the steppe and a wild goat. It roamed the rocks, wild cattle. Deer and boar could be found in the forest along with a range of smaller mammals, birds and reptiles. In that fertile crescent, in places like Ohalo next to the Sea of Galilee, which was created after the last great ice age, the domestication of plants and animals began slowly. The earliest certainly domesticated species that we have is wheat. Very quickly behind that, and barley sometime before 10,000 years before Christ, it seems that it was again related to some climatic oscillations. At the very end of the Ice Age, which actually forced people to intensively feed on these grasses. Domestication of goats and sheep began relatively quickly after that, or be even at the same time. However, it is a little more difficult for us to see because these anatomical changes that characterize domestic animals are not as unambiguous and obvious as they are in plants. So, when you find the remains of sheep and goats, these very early ones, you are sometimes not able to tell whether they are from domesticated animals or wild ones. They are still very similar but the domestication of goats and sheep goes quite fast after plants, somewhere around 9000 BC. Not much after that comes the turn for cattle, and a little later comes the turn for pigs. The domestication of the dog happened a long time ago. However, the dog is a different species, another category of domestic animals that are not for consumption. So domestication for another purpose to be an assistant in hunting, which is still a long time ago. At the same time, there is also the domestication of other plants, cereals, and then various vetch and others. In the area of the Fertile Crescent, it seems that humans first began to depend on wild grains for nutrition. People there began to eat grains from wild grasses. The earliest evidence found so far of a shift to a grain-based diet was found in what is now Israel, which is dated 23,000 years ago. At the end of the Pleistocene, people in the area found themselves faced with a new climate. The end of the Ice Age brought longer and hotter summers and increased drought. This in turn reduced the natural production of wild grains. To make up for the deficit, 
around 10 to 11,000 years ago, people started the process of domesticating and cultivating wild cereals. The first grains with which they tried this were einkern and emmer, an ancient type of wheat. The expansion of agriculture begins in the area known as the Fertile Crescent. We know this because the cereals in the Old World are not descendants of European wild grasses. It is also confirmed that goats and sheep are not descendants of wild European species. But of Western Asia. So, there is no dilemma. In fact, many dated archaeological sites where farmers lived are dated. Those dates spread out quite nicely in the Middle East first, then drop off as you go northwest until you end up somewhere in the Atlantic some 78,000 years late. Unrelated to agriculture in the Fertile Crescent, agriculture also began in other parts of the world. In China, by 9000 BC the first sedentary villages, marking the early Neolithic, are present in northeast China, north China, and the middle and lower Yangtze regions, but plant and animal domesticates until after several more millennia, when domesticated millet or rice agricultural production is finally in place. In India, 9000 BCE, wheat and barley were domesticated in the Indian subcontinent, domestication of horse, sheep and goat soon followed. This period also saw the first domestication of the elephant. In North and South America, the earliest known areas of possible agriculture in the Americas, dating to about 9000 BC in Colombia. The first crops grown in the Americas were corn, beans, and squash in Mexico and Central America, and potatoes and tomatoes in South America, and in many other places in the world. in the Jordan River Valley in present-day Israel. In the 1980s, have discovered the remains of an ancient settlement of the Natafian culture, the, a culture that existed from 12,500 to 9,500 BC, a site called Nahal Angiv. The settlement consisted of about 20 to 30 families. The beginning of agriculture can be seen there. People there ate more than 50 kinds of nuts, fruits and other parts of plants, they ate fish, reptiles, birds, and mammals. They harvested wild grass, but the remains of barley were also found, indicating an early stage of domestication. The remains of some structures at the site indicate that these structures were grain storages. In the Fertile Crescent between 12 and 10 BC, the so-called Natafian culture developed, that culture uses microliths, and some of them were used to harvest grains. Other Natafian tools were mortars, and pestles used either for cracking nuts or for grinding grain, and bone tools such as harpoons, hooks, needles and awls. Clay prints found at similar sites indicate that woven hasura and baskets were used. There is even evidence of the first production of beer. This wide range of technologies indicates that the Natafians lived on a fairly wide and flexible range of natural resources. The economy of this type is obvious and highly specialized for the agricultural lifestyle. The Natafian tendency seems to be to settle in one place for a long period and to exploit the natural resources of one particular area, a prerequisite for choosing a completely sedentary lifestyle. Between 10,500 and 9,000 BC, settlements of the so-called pre ceramic Neolithic or New Stone Age appear in the area of the Fertile Crescent. They contain traces of the first domesticated plants and animals. In Iraq, the remains of settlements were found were traces of domestic animals, 
goats and grains were found. It dates back to 9000 BC. Traces have also been found in Syria, in Tel Abu Her era, especially because the remains of dwellings that had several rooms and were made of mud bricks were found there. Remains of ovens and hearths were also found in these houses. Agriculture changed the way of life. And this is only a small beginning of what will be followed by a tremendous progress in the history of human civilization.